What happens with B? With the extra knowledge that B has happened, analysis is B intersection A versus B intersection A complement, right, which is also equal to B minus A. That is a difference. So, now uh, if A happens then you are actually saying that A intersection B event, if A does not happen then you are actually saying B minus A, right, which is very different from uh, uh, the word without the knowledge of event B happening. And to, do, to deal with this the most intuitive way to formalize conditional probability is you define conditional probability S P conditional probability of A given B B A given B that is the symbol ok this uh, bar vertical bar is given means given. So, probability of A given B is defined as probability of the intersection happening divided by probability of B happening ok. So, take this as the definition of relative or conditional probability A relative to B, A given B. Okay, and the intuition for this is clear from the Venn diagram. So, couple of things immediately follow from here. It is easy to deduce that probability of A given B is equal to A intersection B divided by E intersection B plus E complement intersection B. Right, this is because uh, the denominator is equal to probability of B. Right, so, you can as well write probability of B in terms of this. First, you see that B intersection A versus B intersection A complement these are disjoint. It is a disjoint union and then on that you use the probability map axiom or property which is P B is equal to sum of those two. Right? So, with that uh, you can see that uh, what we claimed in the picture in the Venn diagram, right? this is what is happening. So, it is uh, the favorable over all in the definition. Other things that uh, very easily follow but are interesting is that P A intersection B is uh, probability of B times probability of A given B. Right? This is obvious from the definition, but when you write it this way then it is telling you something about the intersection. Right? So, you have a new formula for intersection and uh, what else? Yeah, so this is also this is since intersection is symmetric, so you also have probability of A times probability of B given A. Right, so you have this relationship between A given B, B given A. Okay, so yeah, let's see a quick example of these formulas. An interesting example. So suppose there are two coins.
okay one is uh, normal so one has head and tail so this we can call normal coin n and the other one let me use a slightly different notation so first has heads and tails second has heads and heads which means it is heavily biased let's call it b okay so you have a unbiased normal coin and you have a biased coin we are calling them n and b you randomly pick one of them and toss let me say i randomly picked picked one and tossed to get heads okay so this is what i got at the end of the experiment now it's a random experiment so you can talk about probability but probability of what because head i have already got so there is no question about that the question is which coin did i pick did i pick the normal coin or the biased coin probability of that so what is the probability that b was picked so what's the probability that i picked b so from the result of this random experiment being held what can you say about the coin that i picked which is secret from you that being the biased coin now intuitively uh so no, well vaguely speaking there are two coins so the probability could have been half right the answer could have been half is that correct no this is this is completely wrong why is it wrong because uh, the biased coin has more heads right it's biased towards head because b is biased towards so intuitively chance of b is higher right this will be this holds to reason that uh, the chance that i picked the biased coin is more once you know that head came out but we are interested in measurement right we are we are interested in actually uh, quantitative value of the probability so how much more than half that's the question so let's do this calculation right how much more so let's calculate so probability that uh, b picked given that each appears head appears so given that head appears the probability that biased coin was picked this is by definition the intersection divided by the probability that h appears
which is now h can appear in uh, two ways right either b was picked or b was not picked so probability which is so it is equal to probability of b intersection h i use the short form divided by probability that uh, b appeared uh, b was picked or b was not picked now what is the probability that uh, b and h both happen so b is picked b is picked uh, by uh, it's a uniformly random process right so either you will pick the biased coin or the unbiased coin so probability is half but if you have picked biased coin then head probability of head is 1 same here now probability of b complement is what b complement is essentially the normal coin right so let me put that so normal coin is picked with probability half and in that case the chance of head reduces which is how much so this comes out to be 2 by 3 the way we calculated these probabilities these are calculated by by looking at the four possibilities and the favorable cases right so there are four possibilities in this experiment first you will pick uh, normal or biased and then you will get head or tails and from these four possibilities you can look at the favorable one and accordingly you get either half or 1 by 4 but then the amazing thing is that this uh, ratio is what we consider and that gives you 2 thirds right so once you know that head came out it is significantly larger chance that the biased coin was picked right so this is a a uh, very good example of conditional probability it gives you a different view of probability right and this is happening because you have extra information without the extra information the probability was half that you would pick biased but now that probability jumps up let me do one more thing so in this example we broke the denominator into two possibility right b and b complement so let us formalize that because it's a useful trick so that is called partition formula so the above example uh, inspires us to simplify probability of an event in terms of a given partition of omega so what is a partition that is uh, omega equal to disjoint union or union of disjoint subsets of omega called bis where b 
BIs are mutually disjoint. And as the equation say, says already, they cover omega. Okay, so, in many situations, you would have a understanding of omega in terms of uh, simpler cases, which are these events bi's, and you would want to uh, break up A into these simpler cases, and then you will do those calculations and you will add up. Right? So, what is the formula for adding up? So, probability of A is uh, probability of B i times probability of A given B i. So, this is an immediate application of conditional probability. What is the proof? A is uh, Uh, breaks up into these parts given by B i, right. So, A intersection B i because well B i covers and partitions omega. So, obviously, it also covers and partitions A like this, which means that probability of A by the axiom of P map is sigma probability of A intersection B i. Now, probability of intersection by the definition of conditional probability we have seen is the following. Right, so that is the proof. So, this is how you break up probability into uh, sum of probabilities by using a partition and uh, this is also equal to probability of A intersection B i. Okay, maybe you just need that. So, I am including it explicitly, but the interesting part is that conditional probability is involved finally. So, in uh, applications or practical examples, you have to come up with a good partition. There may be many partitions possible, you have to pick the one that gives you the best proof, okay, simplest proof. So, it is actually a design problem. So, you should try to find a good partitioning scheme. find a good partition okay, not every partition is good for your problem for your application so let's see an example suppose you are given uh, n sticks of uh, distinct lengths they are n distinct lengths and you have to uh, fix them in n holes. They are arranged in a line. So, you have these holes and you have you randomly arrange the sticks in these holes, one in each. And uh, somebody will look from, let us say from the left. Okay, so, you are watching from the left in front of your eye are these holes, second one behind first and third one behind second and so on and then sticks have been placed in these holes. So, that is the scenario. It is a random arrangement of sticks 
what is the probability we are interested in? So, we are interested in the following probability given k, what is the probability that the kth hole stick or that the stick in the kth hole is visible. Okay, simple enough. So, you are interested in for example, in this picture there are 4 holes, 4 sticks, you randomly put the sticks, these 4 sticks, there are 4 factorial ways, right? there are 24 ways, you can place them as you want and uh, what is the probability that let us say the third stick, stick in the third hole is visible from the left, which means that so that will be possible only if first and second sticks are smaller than the third. If any of those two is uh, higher, then you cannot see the third stick, right? So you or you will always be able to see the first stick, but then the second one there is a condition, third one there is a stronger condition, and so on. So, what is this probability? Now, here I will show you the problem and the advantage of partitioning. So, let us uh, define omega. Omega is the permutations on n sticks. In fact, all permutations, right? you can arrange uh, the sticks. So, let me give you the first partition, partition 1. So, you arrange the sticks in increasing order. and uh, define uh, b i to be permutations where i th stick is in k th hole. Okay, so, with this uh, again uh, partitions the sample space omega. Okay, this is easy to see. So, there are n sticks and uh, now the permutations look at b1, b2. So, the permutations uh, which put uh, one first stick or uh, this is uh, stick 1 which is basically the smallest length in the kth hole and the permutations that put second uh, smallest stick in kth hole, they are obviously different permutations, right, because these sticks are different. So, b1, b2 are uh, disjoint and hence all the bi's are mutually disjoint and they cover omega. Why? Well, because any permutation in omega has to put one of the sticks in the kth hole, right, kth hole cannot be kept empty because it is n on n, it is a bijection. So, this is a partition So, can we utilize it? So, define, uh, so let us call this event uh, A that we are interested in which is only those permutations where kth hole stick is visible from the left. So, you get uh, that probability of A is probability of uh, B i times probability of A given B i.
right now uh, what is probability of bi that is uh, the ith stick goes in the kth hole so it was a random process uh, ith stick had n options so this is 1 by n now what is the probability that kth hole is visible the stick in kth hole is visible when the ith stick went in the kth hole so remember that before i there, there are or overall there are only i minus 1 sticks that are smaller than i h stick right so those i minus 1 are those are the only ones which are allowed to go in holes number 1 to k minus 1 so what you get is uh, i minus 1 choose k minus 1 possibilities of these i minus 1 going to first k minus 1 holes but you don't care about permutation their permutation so you multiply it by k minus 1 factorial times beyond k beyond the kth hole which is n minus k factorial that's the favorable cases and all permutation so to compute the probability you have to count all the permutations so that is is it n factorial no because you have already put ith in the kth hole so it's the remaining n minus 1 factorial right so what you get is uh, this expression so it is sum i to 1 i minus 1 factorial times n minus k factorial divided by n factorial times i minus k factorial it that's the simplification okay which is uh, n minus k factorial divided by n factorial times this expression right this is what you have to calculate maybe you will see a way to cal calculate this and simplify this but a priori it looks uh, complicated so in the next class what we will do is we'll partition in a different way so we so that we get a much simpler calculation and a much simpler value directly Okay, so that we'll do tomorrow.